Men and women are too different to ever be equal. It's like comparing apples and oranges. It is not possible to achieve equality between men and women. There is no such thing. It simply isn't possible. Um, what is possible is to treat them with equal fairness as individuals. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there will be an equal outcome, for example. I think the problem with the concept of sexism is that it suggests there is no difference between the sexes and you must treat them both exactly the same, which is so wrong-headed as to be almost ignorant. Should a man who can carry two bricks in his wheelbarrow be paid the same as a woman who can only carry one brick? Now, what's the answer to that question? Um, you know, if, if, a, if a man can carry two bricks, then during the course of the day, he will do twice as much work as the woman who can only carry one brick. Therefore, the man might argue, well, I should be paid twice as much as the woman. The woman will say, no, that's not fair because I'm not physically able to carry two bricks. And after all, I've done the same amount of work. My point is that if the man was to be paid twice as much as the woman, the woman would object. And she would have some justification for making that objection. On the other hand, if um, they were both paid the same amount, the woman would be happy, but the man is then entitled to object, saying, I'm doing twice the amount of work. My point is, there is no solution. There is no amount of money where people wouldn't say, that's not fair. It's a question of balance. But there's nowhere to put the balance. There's nowhere to draw the line, which would be agreed upon by everyone. There is a fundamental difference between the sexes. There, I mean, if you want an example, just go out and look at all the relationship books about how men and women communicate with each other, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. You won't need books like that if you, had, if you could treat men and women exactly the same. Um, and sexism is based on that concept. So sexism is not a concept that needs updating, I think, a little bit. So when women say I'm a fem, a lot of women say I'm a feminist because I support equality, I feel like tearing my hair and saying, what do you mean? You mean you get paid the same for carrying one brick as I get the pay for carrying two bricks? To which there's no solution. And, and that example that I give there applies right across the board. If there are differences between people, inherent differences, there is never going to be a, a position which will satisfy both of them uh, and which both will see as fair and equal. It's simply a, it's a, question, it's a political debate all the time, always a political debate. So we have to ignore gender in that respect? But if we do ignore gender in that respect, then women will say it's not fair. So do you think... Women's There's a permanent war. Yes. We've got a permanent war. The search for equality is a permanent war. With men saying, hold on, I can carry two bricks, and women saying, no, it's not fair, I'm weak and vulnerable. One man I spoke to described the quest for equality as like aiming for the stars so that you might hit the moon. But it's not like that. There are no stars and there is no moon. Equality between men and women is a logical impossibility. And so, like the end of Staircase, equality lies at the top of it. It seems that if we just keep climbing, we'll eventually reach the top. And even if we never quite reach the top, at least by continuing to climb, we'll surely get closer to real equality, right? Wrong. It's a question of balance. But there's nowhere to put the balance, there's nowhere to draw the line, which would be agreed upon by everyone. As a consequence of this gender issue, we are going to be forever engaged in a permanent gender argument. It is never going to end. And unless we decide to ignore gender completely, hide our eyes and say, how many bricks are they, are they carrying? If you, if you then do that and then look at it again in terms of gender terms, you are going to see a hierarchy. You are going to see men basically earning more money. Yes, uh, and women spending it. True enough, yes. And even in similar jobs, sometimes men will work those extra few hours yeah. and they'll be able to do more as part of that job. Yes. And so do you think that's acceptable in this way? Completely. Absolutely. I think it's the only, it's the only hope we have. Uh, but that will happen. I mean, I don't doubt that that's the way that we will head. It's unfortunate that the false ideal of equality has been made so important since the rise of feminism. Pursuing the unobtainable panacea of equality is wasting an extraordinary amount of energy and resources and is the cause of massive discrimination against men. If we had anything approaching real equality in the workplace, we'd have to face up to some clear realities. For example, astronauts. 
In 2001, 22% of the astronaut corps in NASA were female. How could that happen? How many girls do you imagine grow up dreaming of becoming astronauts? And how many boys? The number of male applicants for spaceflight dwarfs that of females. So how many more qualified men must have been passed over to ensure female places on the space shuttle? There shouldn't be any female astronauts. Having female astronauts is like having 12-year-old disabled girls on the Olympic men's 100-meter team. It's only possible if you change all the rules and ignore things like ability, qualifications and merit. The same goes for firefighters, police officers, soldiers and pilots for that matter. It's only the massive and ongoing discrimination against men that allows women to take the sought-after places in those professions. The government continues to trumpet the ideal of equality in the workplace, even though it's impossible to achieve. No one should have to put up with discrimination. We need to make further progress on fairness, and that's why we will legislate to give more scope for employers if they want to increase the number of women or black or Asian employees to take positive action. Only under apartheid in South Africa has discrimination deliberately been written into law. How can this be happening in Britain? In terms of what the government should and shouldn't be doing, if they're going to do anything, it should be based on the best assumption, the best premises, the best understanding we have of male and female psychology. And that isn't one in which we think male and females are, to all extents and purposes, identical. Um, it's just not a realistic basis for any kind of any kind of policy. There may be very good reasons for demanding that particular companies or industries are 50-50 between the sexes. You can't infer from the fact that they're not identical at present that the cause of that disparity is overt, is discrimination in any particular form, such that the reason why you would have to have policies mandating an equal split was to remedy a particular injustice. That isn't a basis for demanding that there's a, an equal split, but there might be other reasons to, for doing it. It might just be that it might just be that women are better at some jobs, but they don't get them because they're not as pushy. And that might be, a, that might be an alternative reason for, um, for having uh, hiring policies that, that are more geared towards women. But then you'd be, doing it for the, you'd be doing it for the kind of the right reason or a better reason than remedying um, an injustice that may not be there. Women are like cyclists. Cyclists want to be treated the same as cars on the road even though they can't keep up with traffic, except when they come to a red light. Then they want to be treated differently to cars. Women don't want equality. Very few women indeed want to work as a matter of necessity. Most women will work only until they find a man to take the main burden away from her. My father always worked two jobs, which made my mother so comfortable she'd quit her job over anything. Check, please. And I mean anything. Now, do I look like I have your check? All I'd holler at people, I don't need this, my husband has two jobs. Indeed, what women really want is a Richard Gere to take them away from it all. Women truly believe that the world of work has changed in recent times. They believe that they've come of age in employment, such that they're not merely the equal of men, but have actually surpassed men as the most valuable workers. The kind of prime virtue in the labour market is going to be a set of emotional skills that women have developed over hundreds of years. And I think it's that that is going to enable women to demand, in return, changes in the work culture, because organisations need women. So they're going to have to make whatever accommodation is necessary to keep those women there and in those places. And men will have to learn these kinds of emotional skills or find themselves outmanoeuvred of the nature of work and what it will mean for women if uh, we're living in a world where the technology has so radically changed our lives. And I think the most obvious change is um, the reduction in emphasis on physical labour. If now you sit at a keyboard, you don't have to be physically strong anymore. And that will mean a whole change, I think, for the rise of women in the workplace. Women actually believe that real work is about tapping on a keyboard and being emotional. This shows just how dissociated women are from the realities of the working world. It shows how sheltered the lives of women in the Western world have been and how thoroughly women have been brainwashed by government and business interests under the guise of feminism. Women are not oppressed. Women are more than half the population, and yet they're treated like a minority. Women like to think that the measures to enforce equality in the workplace sexual harassment, pay gap, glass ceiling, sex discrimination, glass cliff are being done for the good of women. They're not. 
Women are simply an untapped resource that needs to be harnessed and put to work. Women are not being freed, they're being enslaved, just like men. Fairness is important for our economy. An economy which sees no one pushed to the margins or excluded brings the widest pool of workers to employers and diversity makes us outward facing and helps us to compete in the global economy. Diversity does not help us compete in the global economy. Talent does. Diversity for its own sake inhibits progress and discriminates against men. I've seen no evidence from women that they genuinely want equality with men. And judging from the typical women that I come across, I don't expect I ever will. The difference between men and women in the workplace is that whilst women are less capable workers than men, they make far better slaves. If you're looking at a capitalist society, you want fodder, which are the people who are going to do the work. As long as you employ women, you, you have a very malleable force and you have a force that you can pay a lot less. And, 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 and in fact, if you look at what's happening, I mean, as the women pour into the various jobs, including the legal profession, there are more women doctors, there's more women law lawyers, so on and so forth. What happens is that you get a very unbalanced society, but a very obedient society. Does this mean you think that the government would support feminism for these reasons? Tacitly. I don't think anybody sits down with a slide and rule and says this is what we're going to do. I think largely what happens is now there are sufficient powerful women in, for instance, the Labour Party to be virtually be allowed to do what they want to do.